Okay, we're going to talk about the alveolus and answer the questions. What is it? And what cells make up its walls? And what is its role in respiration? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. The alveolus is the functional unit of the respiratory system because this is the site of gas exchange. There's approximately three to 500 million alveoli in each of our lungs. And there's a claim that if you spread out all the alveoli in our lungs, that they cover a tennis court surface area of 200 meters squared. Come to find out, that's probably not true. You see, this is assuming lungs follow Euclidean geometry, flat, smooth surfaces measured with simple area equations. But lungs do not follow Euclidean geometry. Lungs are fractal. Their surface repeats complex branching patterns at smaller and smaller scales. A paper by Rayo and Johnsey showed that modern imaging tells a different story. You see, alveolar surface area is more like 40 to 140 square meters. That's like a small apartment not a tennis court, but that's more impressive, not less. Lungs maximize gas exchange through fractal branching and these thin diffusion barriers. The real marvel isn't lung size, it's lung design. And that design is through the alveolus and the cells that we see lining the alveolus, which I'm going to cover now. Beginning with type 1 pneumocytes, pneumo means air, site means cell, also called type 1 alveolar cells. They cover most of the internal surface area of each alveolus. They're thin cells, simple squamous epithelium, 25 nanometers thick, and each of those cells is joined by tight junctions. This thin cell is ideal for gas exchange, for CO2 to diffuse from blood to the alveolus and O2 from the alveolus into the blood. A pulmonary capillary, as with all capillaries, lined by endothelial cells, and they form the vascular side of the barrier. And just as a reminder of things that we've talked about in other areas of the kidney, pulmonary capillaries also have lining their cell membrane angiotensin converting enzyme, or ACE, that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 as part of the RAS system. Um, there's a, the shared basement membrane is a thin sheet of extracellular matrix jointly shared by type 1 pneumocytes and endothelial cells right there. And it contains loose connective tissue, wisps of collagen and elastin that are synthesized by fibroblast cells. There's also type 2 pneumocytes or type 2 alveolar cells. They cover about 5 to 7% of the internal surface area of each alveolus. They're larger, cubed shaped, and they have these characteristic lamellar bodies containing surfactant. Now, surfactant's function is it reduces the surface tension of alveoli, preventing their collapse during exhalation. And they line the internal surface area of each alveoli as showed there. Without surfactant, alveoli collapse and are difficult to expand. In this light micrograph, the black arrows show a couple of type 2 pneumocytes. Those white circles in the cytoplasm are lamellar bodies containing surfactant. Infant respiratory distress syndrome, or IRDS, is observed in prematurely born infants where their surfactant production is insufficient due to immature type 2 pneumocytes, which start making surfactant around 20 weeks. And 20 weeks after fertilization, insufficient surfactant leads to an increase of alveolar surface tension that increases the risk of the alveoli collapsing during expiration. This is followed by a reduction in total surface area of gas exchange, hypoxia, and hypercapnia develops. Alveolar macrophage is also known as dust cells or heart failure cells. They phagocytize bacteria, dust, cellular debris, excess surfactant, etc. They're derived from monocytes or from precursors on site during embryonic development. This light -like micrograph shows five different alveolar macrophages. And you look at those and say, hey, it looks like there's dust in them. And that's why they're also called dust cells. But they're also called heart failure cells because in the context of left-sided heart failure, which then causes the pulmonary veins or causes an increase in hydrostatic pressure in pulmonary veins and an increase of hydrostatic pressure in pulmonary capillaries, which then causes fluid and red blood cells to leak from the capillaries into to the alveoli. And as red blood cells break down, their hemoglobin releases the iron, which accumulates in these alveolar macrophages as hemosiderin, making the cells appear brown. 
and specifically uh, it's making the alveolar macrophages as pure brown. So in this um, histopathology slide of alveoli taken from a patient with left-sided heart failure, those black arrows are all showing alveolar macrophages, which is why they're also called heart failure cells. All right. Putting some of these concepts together, the blood air barrier is the interface of type 1 pneumocytes, their fused basement membranes and endothelial cells, uh, the fused basement membranes of type 1 pneumocytes and endothelial cells, allowing the rapid diffusion of gases. Okay? The layers are surfactant, type 1 pneumocyte, there's the shared basement membrane with the endothelial cell of the pulmonary capillary, blood air barrier. Really thin, one micrometer thin. That's what allows the rapid diffusion of gases. And for just comparison, here's a human hair in EM that's 120 micrometers thick, and the blood air barrier is one micrometer thick. Let's look at this a little bit more closely with the a light micrograph on the right and an illustration on the left, the alveolus above and an alveolus below, and there's a pulmonary capillary between them, an endothelial cell, and a type 1 pneumocyte for the alveolus above and a type 1 pneumocyte of an alveolus below. And you see that area and that area is what we're showing together in those light micrographs. And so the blood air barrier is half of that. It's just the alveolus and the pulmonary capillary associated with it. That's just showing that blood air barrier is really thin. How, what happens if this goes wrong? Like, let's use one example in pneumonia. The alveoli fill with pus fluid microorganisms. This impairs gas exchange and it increases the diffusion distance for oxygen and CO2. And it also reduces the surface area available for gas exchange. Let's do that again in an illustration. This is a healthy alveolus. This is an alveolus filled with pus fluid and microorganisms in pneumonia. Look at now the distance that CO2 has to diffuse to get out of the blood and oxygen to get from the alveolus into the blood in this case. Look at that. A healthy chest x-ray, and now let's take you know, hundreds of thousands of those alveoli and now fill them with pus. You can now see these consolidations. See that? When you get enough of those alveoli filled, so not only can you see it in a chest x-ray, but now you get a, an appreciation now of the reduction of surface area available for gas exchange to occur and the distance that gas has to. This is what makes pneumonia such a, a problematic and challenging, life-threatening situation at times. Let's do this one more time now through a light microscope, okay? So now let's, uh, now let's take this and we're just going to zoom around and uh, yeah, let's take a look at what we can see here, okay? Oh, that's pretty. Look at there's a pulmonary vein there with a bunch of red blood cells in between. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And uh, okay, so right over here, you see using the pinky, that is a capillary. You can see the red blood cell element to that. And that's probably an endothelial cell nucleus associated with it. That's likely then a type 1 pneumocyte. I'm guessing because of how thin this is. I just see purple dots, but I'm guessing. That's an alveolus on this side, and there's an alveolus on the other, okay? Um, and so those alveoli. There's a smooth muscle knob there as well. Um, it looks like a type 2 pneumocyte because I can see those lamellar bodies. Um, and, uh, oh, there's a beauty. There's a type two pneumocyte. You can tell those lamellar bodies inside of it. And so it's what produces the surfactant, which then lines the internal surface right here of that alveolus reducing surface tension. Um, let's see here. Now there might be some more there. Oh, look at those. These are beauty. Okay, right here, look at all these dust cells. Okay, those dust cells, because they look like you just put pepper inside them, alveolar macrophages. Oh, that's beautiful. And that, my friends, is the alveolus in a nutshell.